Welcome to In The Workshop, and in this episode I'll be taking a quick look at a Castle Steam V6 model boiler. At the moment I'm mounting all the components onto a board so we can run the boiler. This clip shows the firebox base fitted with a gas burner. This is actually a coal-fired boiler, but the owner of this boiler requested that it was supplied with a gas burner just for convenience. This is a boiler feed pump, and it's a rotative type boiler feed pump with a scotch crank. And I'm going to fit this to the baseboard to supply water to the boiler rather than just use the hand pump because it is, after all, a very large boiler and will take quite a long time to fill. For the initial filling of the boiler, I'm going to use a 5 8 diameter ram hand pump. I'm using a miniature steam locomotive hand pump for this job, but it has to sit on a brass block which I'm currently making. And this small brass block will lift the hand pump clear of the baseboard so I can use a 90 degree angle fitting to connect the water pump to the water tank. And the water tank's going to fit here. These are just pilot holes. I'm now going to fit the tank. It's a large silver soldered copper tank. And I'm securing this water tank to the baseboard using four small screws. Back to the brass block. I've drilled two holes in the center of it and countersunk the holes. And I'll be fixing it to the baseboard with two countersunk screws. After drilling four small holes with the number 48 drill and tapping them 6BA, I can then fit the brass block to the board. And then it's quite a simple job to fit the pump to the brass block using four 6BA bolts. Before fitting this miniature rotative boiler feed pump, I need to make sure that it works OK. I suspected that it would work OK because it was built by the late Mr Bernard Walker, who was an extremely good model engineer. And as you can see from this clip, it works well but the globe valve's a little bit leaky. I don't need this one anyway because there's one already fitted to the boiler. So as you can see, all I did on the rotative boiler feed pump was fit a steam union to the inlet of the steam chest, and the other end of the steam pipe will fit to this valve on the boiler. If I wanted to be critical about anything to do with this beautifully made castle steam boiler, it's this hideous pressure gauge. That's going, and we're fitting this one instead. All of the fittings on this boiler are sealed using PTFE tape, and I really hate that on model boilers, I think it looks terrible. So I use Loctite 542, which seals the thread, but is invisible. As you can see here, once the pressure gauge is tightened into position, you wouldn't know there was any Loctite 542 in there. A very important point when fitting pressure gauges, make sure you use two spanners like this, one on the union nut and one on the squared part of the pressure gauge. And this will ensure that you don't damage the pressure gauge while actually fitting it to the union. And here is a comparison. On the left is the original pressure gauge that looks like it's come off an old compressor. And on the right is this very nice brass pressure gauge. Here's a close-up of it. I think it's miles better. There's too much information on the left one. It's very confusing. I don't know where the thinking was to fit a pressure gauge like this to the boiler that looks the way it does. The brass one does look much better, I'm sure you'll agree. All that remains to be done now is the piping. This is a steam pipe to the steam chest from the boiler. And this is a short water pipe that goes from the water tank to the fitting that I put in place underneath the pump. And that's why, of course, it needed the block to elevate it from the baseboard. The next job is to pipe the pump to the boiler, but I'm not going to show any more piping. That's enough of it for now. Suffice to say, I piped all the components together, and now it's time to light the boiler. But before lighting the boiler, I'm going to put some water in it. And the hand pump, as you can see, works perfectly well. I'm speeding it up so it takes less time. That took me by surprise, and it removed most of the hair from the back of my hands. But never mind, my hands will look much better on camera for the next few weeks. As you can see, the boiler is lit, and it's kind of a gas cooker element that's in there. And it works very well. At first I thought, well, I don't like the look of this, but... In reality, it raised steam fairly quickly for such a large boiler. This boiler has a wet firebox, it has fire tubes, and it's six inches in diameter, and it's quite tall too. As the flames fan out from the gas burner, they're actually heating the inner firebox, the sides of the inner firebox to be exact, and this slows down the rate at which the heat goes up the chimney and applies the heat where it's needed. It's all systems go now, the boiler's lit and it's burning nicely. I'll have a quick look at the fire, yes that's good. Oh dear, it's gone out. That's because I was adjusting the valve 
and I increased the pressure too much and it just blew all the flames off the burner. This time I turned down the pressure. I'm not using a gas regulator by the way, it's direct from the canister, so the pressure is a little bit on the high side. If you just saw my hand touching the boiler, that's to see how hot it's getting, and it's getting quite warm. It would appear that this small gas burner is more efficient than it looks. After about 10 minutes, there's still no pressure on the gauge. The small gas burner is generating nowhere near the heat that you would get with coal, but it's far less messy. I'm taking this opportunity to just lubricate the pump. First of all, I'm filling the displacement lubricator. And for this, I'm using some steam oil. This is not my normal mixture, this is neat steam oil. I have more than one of these Rylang type oil cans, and one is just filled with steam oil, that's one I've just been using. But for lubricating the bearings, I use my oil mixture from the other Rylang oil can that I have. I'll take this opportunity once again to go over my formula for lubricating oil. It's 50% steam oil, and this is 1000 grade steam oil, and then it's 25% machine oil, and approximately 25% rapeseed oil, or canola oil as it's known in other countries. But in England, it's known as rapeseed oil. And you can buy it from the supermarket in quite large bottles, and it's very, very cheap. It's used in cooking. And I think they also use rapeseed oil to manufacture biodiesel, but I don't need any of that because my car will not run on biodiesel. It says so in the handbook. And by the time I've lubricated the engine and rotated it to mix the oil a little bit, I think we have some steam. In no time at all, the needle on the gauge shot towards the 90 pounds per square inch mark, so it was time to put some more water in the boiler to bring the pressure down and make sure there's plenty of water in there. This pressure is a little on the high side in one sense and not on the high side in another sense. What I'm trying to say is, on the front of the boiler, on a metal plate, it says working pressure 80 psi, but on the boiler certificate, it says working pressure up to 100 psi. So at the moment it's sitting there at about, what, 85? The water pump is now pumping, and as you can see, the water is going up the glass quite rapidly. And so you can see this more clearly, I'm running the clip at double speed. A sudden influx of water like this, of course, reduces the pressure, but it soon goes back up there, which I'm quite pleased about with such a small burner. In order to evaluate the boiler's performance, I've connected it to a small steam engine in the workshop. And this small steam engine makes no impression on the boiler whatsoever. The safety valves continue to blow off and it's far too small really for a boiler of this size. In the next two videos, I take the boiler outside into the garden, set it all up on the picnic table and my friend and I run a variety of different sized steam engines to see how it performs. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.